Thank you. That was Dr. Elizabeth Coleman from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, who is also an advisor for SurvivorNet. I want to say thanks so much to The Atlantic for allowing us to collaborate at this extraordinary conference. It's rare, in my experience, to have such a powerful mix of voices speaking out about cancer in the same room. Many of the people here were excited to be calling part of the SurvivorNet family. Uh, again, I'm Steve Alpern. I'm the co-founder of SurvivorNet along with Tim Langloss. For those of you who don't know us, we are a new media company that provides the latest accurate information about cancer treatment options from leading experts and top cancer hospitals. We also provide stories and information from patients themselves. Our mission is to democratize access to information about cancer. And for me, it's really very personal. A few weeks after I graduated from college, my dad was diagnosed with esophagus cancer. That's a bad disease, and there's been not a lot of progress. It was a horrible experience, not just because he didn't make it, but because even for a family that seemingly had some options, we struggled terribly to understand what to do and how to access the right people. A lot of folks today told me the same thing. Around the same time, I started in the news business. I spent a bunch of years working for a guy called Peter Jennings at ABC. Peter's lung cancer story literally bent the curve on early detection for lung cancer in the country. It had a big impact on me and a lot of other folks. During that time, we did thousands of stories about cancer. You've probably heard them. Tamoxifen is good, tamoxifen is bad, the latest researcher study says this, now it says something else. We were quite well-intentioned, but it wasn't really a satisfactory way to help people when they get sick. When you get diagnosed, it's pretty near the worst day of your life. Naturally, most people turn to the internet to learn everything they can. Sadly, the information resources there are low quality or pretty much impossible to understand. I, I, a lot of times I feel like I'm reading the phone book in some of this stuff. At the same time, the scientific revolution we've been talking about today makes it harder even for doctors to keep up with the progress, let alone the rest of us. We created SurvivorNet to address this problem and to close what we know is the massive information gap in cancer. Really, we're solving problems which we know millions of people are grappling with. One of our users sent a note just now that, that uh, really struck me. Her name is Trey. She's a 47-year-old woman fighting triple negative breast cancer. She says, I read all of the articles on the website for Stanford Oncology where I received treatment. Stanford is, of course, an excellent place. They've collaborated, us and we're very, collaborated with us and we're very grateful. But, she says, the material is hard to understand. So I cross-reference it with videos on SurvivorNet. The videos make complex information easier to digest. When you are fighting a terminal illness, peace of mind matters. Another user, Kiara, who I think is here today, told us, I wish I had SurvivorNet four years ago when I went into treatment pretty much blind, again, like a lot of us. Cancer is something that can make people feel really alone. But the stories of people like me on SurvivorNet make me feel more connected, more understood, and less shameful. You are validating what I feel and think and even inspire me on my bad days. We are here to help people through those bad days. SurvivorNet has collaborated with many of the leading cancer centers in the country. A lot of them are here today and we're very, very grateful for the help. That's allowed us to create a resource that presents different treatment options and opinions so that people can understand, be more aware, and make better decisions for themselves and their families. These days, a big part of that involves money. All of us are spending more than ever before on our health care, and it's coming out of our own pockets. We really need help making better decisions. Surviving is also partnering with the biopharmaceutical industry. I have to say, one of the things we learned pretty early on in creating this resource is that to really make treatments available to a wide group of people, not a lot happens without pharma. 
the industry is pushing the envelope in an extraordinary way and financing a lot of the revolution in cancer. This revolution is one of the really great stories of our time. As a guy who came from news, I'm finding it way more gratifying helping people with cancer all day than covering politics. You might, uh, not hard to understand why. But it's of course the people who matter most in all of this. Uh, our team at SurvivorNet would love for you to share your stories. We've learned there is a lot of comfort to be gained and offered in the act of sharing. Please have a look at SurvivorNet.com. We think it can really help. Thank you.